Hello, my name is Tim Wilmot and welcome to my watercolour demo. This time taking some inspiration from a TV programme. In this watercolour I'll be covering a few watercolour techniques like laying down a wash, wet in wet, bit of splattering, blending colours, negative painting, as in painting around these cars that we see, and some dry brush strokes. Also I'll take you through the normal stage I go through in a painting and cover such things as timing. Those of you who've seen my previous demos will know that I paint in a loose style or impressionistic style and that's what I want to try and do, certainly do with, with this picture. So this is my reference photo um, taken from a fairly recent TV program, a property program uh, I guess for copyright reasons, I'll have to um, say that this is a program produced by the BBC, I think, and aired on the home channel, as you can see there in the top left corner. Um, and it's a program called Escape to the Country. This location is Exmouth in the UK. And it was a row, or it is a row of houses that are in the Dutch style, the the gable ends to the roofs, they've got that funny sort of stepped um, appearance that you see in Holland and Northwest Europe. Um, so that's the scene. And I think from a watercolour point of view, what I'm looking at here is tone. Um, if you look at the sky, it's not it's a lot darker than the actual buildings. Um, there's not a lot of difference between them. Obviously the buildings are, are brighter, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, not a lot of difference in, between the two. And from a watercolour point of view, we've got some nice darks in there. Uh, what I like is the foliage hanging down, the overhang of the uh, foliage. Um, we'll make a play of that. And then the shadows across the road and I will introduce a figure um, this scene is missing a figure so we'll pop one in there walking down the road or up the road we'll keep the cars in a bit of a challenge with the shadows um, if you look at the near house with these windows um, you could get lost in a lot of detail there and, and so it warrants a little bit of simplification, um, which lends itself to painting in a loose style. So we'll see how we get on. So I think this will be quite a quick painting to do. It's uh, not particularly complex. And as I do, first of all, an outline sketch using a 3B pencil starting from the left hand side and I'm just looking at the shapes of those grey rooftops and get those in as best I can in relation to each other. So I'm not actually drawing the whole building, just concentrating on those shapes, those dark areas. And what's probably not too apparent here are those these gable ends to the buildings with the the step like appearance to their to their sides. Bit of a curve on that window. And the lower window. Now these cars. Just very quickly, you'll see that the tops of the cars, just thinking about shapes again, they're, they're not all in line, they're not all level. Um, some up, some down, obviously cutting across each other. So that's what I'm trying to replicate here. Just 
get this near one in. And then the bottoms. It's also giving us a little bit of into perspective this this row of cars leading also leading the eye hopefully towards the back and let's get a figure in here I think just one two might be overdoing it don't think I've got enough space for two And spotted another roof there, get in a window. And a wheel arch on that car, which may not be too apparent in the finished painting, but just so that I get an idea of scale. And then the bottom of the building there quite dark and we've got some bold lines bold vertical lines coming down which will again help help us with the perspective so let's start painting now what I'm going to do first of all is just dirty up these houses that I know they're white but they're not totally white so they need to be tainted a little bit with whatever I've got in my palette a bit of blue a bit of yellow and this will this will dry lighter and I'm not not bothered with keeping uh, up to the lines there they were just an indication of the rooftops and then again on this right hand side I'm using a Raphael brush here Raphael mop brush and it's their size 6 and the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford 300 grams in weight and medium texture NOT Now, once I've done the buildings, let's go in with the sky and fairly dark at the top. So again, this, this will dry lighter. And I'm not too fussed if it does bleed just a little bit. But we are sort of painting around the rooftops and the ends of those buildings and we've come a little bit lighter towards the horizon now the road which is a bit of a warmer color so that's why I reached for the alizarin crimson there, just to start off with. And paint around the cars. This bottom of the building is dark as well. This will be this will be the color where there's gaps in the shadows from the overhanging tree. This will be the base color. So let that dry. Make sure it's 100% dry. And now we'll make a start on the rooftops slightly smaller brush this is still a Raphael mop brush and this one I think is a size 4 
So I need a nice grey here. And I'm mixing a cerulean blue with a burnt sienna. Oh, my, my palette, by the way, um, from the top, neutral tint, burnt umber, third one down, burnt sienna, then yellow ochre, then viridian green, then cobalt tur turquoise, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, sort of in the middle, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange, and at the bottom, there's a, I think it's a lemon yellow or cad yellow. So I'm just getting these rooftops now, following my outline sketch. And this mop brush has got a nice edge to it when it's not, it's not particularly fully loaded. But when there's not too much, when it's not too overloaded, you can get a very, a very nice edge. Go a little, little bit more intense as the buildings come towards us, the, as we've got these nearer buildings. And then up to that gable end. And then the lower roof on that building up to the end of the building. Leave a little rectangle there for a window. And then just a bit of a shadow on the inside of that gable end. Now this roof actually, this rooftop needs to be a little bit higher than my initial outline. So I'll just go above my above my pencil mark. Now this shadow, there's a shadow coming from, might be the tree, I think it's the tree going across that middle building and up its side and then down to the tops of the cars, paint around those. Not sure yet whether these cars will be dark or light, but we'll still paint around them and this near car. Now, as I'm doing these windows, it doesn't doesn't matter if it bleeds into that roof. Let's just see how we get on. So it's just an indication of that window there, and then a bit darker with the this near building, which is in the shade of the tree. We'll add a bit more form to the windows later on. This is still sort of the, the base colour. A bit darker towards the bottom. Now we've got some shadows 
coming across this building at an angle. So quickly put those in. We've gone a bit darker now as we're coming towards us. Then just a few lines to mark the, the brickwork there. A bit of dark roof behind that. Now, left hand side, let's get these bushes in. They're a sort of warm reddish colour. Maybe, maybe the leaves were purple. In reality, it's just some random strokes here to indicate some sort of some sort of shrub or bush. Let's go a bit darker. So neutral tint with allergen crimson. Don't worry if you go over the masking tape there. I picked up a bit of blue for the shadow across the road and another another little line further on maybe a street light or something like that so this shadow I'm going up again just painting around the bottom of the cars and then go darker as I go over to the right hand side. Alazan Crimson with Ultramarine Blue there. So I happen to work quite quickly now because I'm going to paint the cars in starting with now let's get this figure in first because the, the cars and the figures I want them to bleed into the that shadow I put across the road. So I'm still using that number four mop brush. So start with these cars few a few windscreens and then shadow underneath the cars Let's make this one a bit red. So it's not too not too monotonous this row.
So this is allowing to bleed into the shadows across the road that's still quite moist. And perhaps that windscreen there is partially hidden by the car in front. I've just picked up some water and I'm just splashing around accidentally <laughs> some's gone on the side of that building there doesn't matter I'll just quickly reach for a paper tissue mop it up I could have left it could have made it into something now this near car will make it a bit darker than the others but try and get it to bleed at the base So there's a few horizontal lines that are catching the light at the back of this car. And then the base and a little bit more splattering so it's not too neat. So a little bit of splatter on the left hand side with some clear water. I'm dropping some clear water into that figure. I think those legs are a little bit too dark. So I've added in some, dropped in some clear water and there's a slight slope on this board about 10 degrees, 15 degrees. So it just travels down quite slowly. Let's just lift out a bit of paint from the back windscreen of this near car. Windscreens can be quite tricky to do because certainly in shade there's lots of things going on, quite complex reflections, lines and shapes, colours inherited from wherever the light's coming from. Let's just go back to this guy and bring out a, a little bit more color from those legs. I think it's all right now. So once that's dried, I'm now going to add a bit of detail into the rooftops and we'll add in some windows. So I've got here 
a small, a small to medium sized synthetic brush with a fairly good point. And I'm just picking up some, some of that dirty color at the top there, which is probably neutral tin mixed with some other color and we're just picking up on a few details here we need to have some shadows behind the gable ends shadows onto the rooftops so let's get a nice dark here try and get a good point on the brush a nice edge and then get that shadow in. probably only one prominent window facing us there on the side of that building. Add in a few horizontal lines, maybe one on top of the car. There could be a, a roof rack or a sign on the top of that van or car. And then just something on the left hand side there. Get some end windows in. Again, we need a bit of shadow behind this gable end. Maybe it's a little bit too dry there, doesn't matter. Continue on those, those gaps between the bricks. A few dark lines, almost dry brush strokes here. Not, not too much water on the brush. Some little architectural details. Now these windows. Don't want to overdo them too much just try and get the impression of the windows and there we're not going to paint every single pane in but there are some that are light some that are quite dark so we'll just put a few in a bit of cobalt turquoise there with that neutral tint and then this bottom window perhaps a little bit darker
paint in a few details of windscreens there on that penultimate car and you saw me just smudge it out a bit because it, I think it was just a, a little bit too dark so while it as soon as I, I think about it I just, just smudge it out with the fingers there I go again And joining the back of that car with the detail at the bottom of the house, that dark band going across. A few strokes just to indicate the road there. Now we've got a saw brush here, or a dagger brush, which is very good for foliage effect. So I'm mixing quite a dark color here and a medium amount of paint on the brush. And then just in a quick fashion, as I'm touching the paper, it sort of makes a leaf type shape so as random as I can do it sometimes the more you think about it the less natural it will be um, and then bring these lines bring these these leaves down on top of the buildings not want to leave them away from the building so again just going slightly over that building this is a good way of framing the top of the picture as well so the sky is not too boring and while we still got this brush we can use it like a rigger brush to get in some thin lines, maybe aerials, TV aerials on the rooftops, a few lines on the buildings. That bottom window still needs a bit of attention. So let's uh, get that shadow in of that window. A few more windows on the end of the buildings. So I'm back with my smallish synthetic brush here. Yeah, let's get this bottom window a good bit darker.
And while I've got this brush, I'm just adding little marks here and there. So I think we're nearly done. I think I need to maybe just add in a yellow registration plate on the back of this car. Not too much. Just smudged out a little bit there. I think we're done. So this is the finished picture. Just cropped it a little bit just to fit in with a widescreen so we're missing a little bit a band at the top and a band at the bottom but you get the idea and so just to summarize a picture inspired by watching a tv program um very thankful to the pause button and rewind without that it probably wouldn't be possible certainly be a lot, lot more difficult to take a photo. Um, so pausing at the right spot, taking a photo and uh, making it making it my own, basically, um, my own interpretation of the scene. Uh, but obviously credits to the BBC and this uh, property program Escape to the Country, and the Home Channel. So hopefully you'll have a go, um, pretty similar to a video I did a while back, uh, along the lines of um, using Google Street View as, as a way of just um, picking up some ideas for a painting. So if you have, if your imagination is dried up or you've you've run out of ideas of things to paint, then tune in to programs like this. You might you might get you might find something to paint. So thanks for watching. Please catch more of my work on my website www.timwilmot.com T I M W I L M O T and there you'll see uh, lots of recent pictures and details of the demos and workshops I do. But thanks very much for watching. Thank you very much.